Right. Um, my name is uh, Peggy Namadi Saka. I'm the one doing the interview. And um, I'm the regional coordinator for Kenya Alliance for Advancement of Children in Coast Region. So I'll let the young person introduce himself. That is his name, his age, and his relationship with CAF. Thank you so much, Namadi. Mm. My name is Obed Mitao Mule. I am a CAF beneficiary, first and foremost. Right now, I'm a child rights ambassador. I have gone through the system, I've been there with CAC to the empowerment, and now I'm, I'm coming back to give back to the children and also to empower fellow youth so that we can start a program. Right now, I'm currently 20 years old, I'll be turning 21 in December, and I'm also a mechanical engineering student at the Technical University of Kenya, and it's a pleasure to be here. Welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are? Okay, you, 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 uh, you are just a little bit more besides um, what, uh, who exactly are you and what have you been able to do? Uh, I think to define that, if you are able to just take everything away from me, the one single thing that I'll be left with, I think, is the voice. I consider myself a voice, even for the guys who don't have voices, the voice that's that is. Because first of all, I really love the empowerment, reaching out to younger people, interacting with children, getting to know what are the issues that are facing them. Mm. Because as a child, I can relate mm. to back then to the issues that were facing me. Mm. We had uh, issues on uh, abuse, physical mm. abuse of children, sexual mm. abuse of children, mm. children who are not able to access education. And all those, all these things uh, were actually happening in my community and some were actually happening with me myself. So that was, so for me, getting going back and actually empowering those children, empowering my family, that is one thing that has stuck with me and I think will stick with me for the rest of my life. Thank you. Uh, what does peace mean to you? Peace. I think peace for me starts from inside, inside mm -hmm. one's own self, being, at, uh, being accepting who you are as a person. Mm -hmm so that you are able to accept others as they are. And if you are able to live in a society when, uh, that is inclusive, that mm -hmm. means each and every one of us is able to accept the other for who they are. Mm. Though, how, no matter how different their cultures are, no matter how different the person speaks, no matter how, how different the color of the skin of the other person is, mm. I think that, for me, will be the perfect uh, scenario of peace. What well, freedom? What is freedom to you? Freedom is an expression. If I'm able to express myself, if I'm able to express my character, if I'm able to express my thoughts, if I'm able to express my views mm -hmm. and speak them out without actually any fear that I might be stigmatized, that I may be isolated or maybe rejected by guys, that for me, that, that is freedom. That. Mm. And do um, you feel yourself? What, is, what does it mean for you to be self? Self. For me, it's all about being protected, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, either by the law. Secondly, I'm a religious person. I also believe in safety from a higher power. Mm -hmm. I also believe in safety from the community, mm -hmm. the people that I put around me. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Know, yeah. okay. So, you have expressed that, um, you know, what peace means to you, what freedom means to you, and, and what safe being self means to you. What what will it take? Mm -hmm. um, what do you need for the above to happen? What will it take to ensure that the desires that you have placed happen? That I am that you your, what will it take for you to enjoy that freedom, to enjoy that that peace and to enjoy that safety? I think if you all, all come together, all the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. For me the first the biggest stakeholder is the government. Mm -hmm the community and then the marginalized people mm -hmm. all of us if we all work together mm. including the marginalized groups that is i'm also including the children mm. the youths mm. yeah so for me if we were all able to actually mm -hmm. come together common ground and actually decide that you know what we're going to make movements together and when the government sets policies, it sets policies with uh, everyone in consideration mm. together with the, all other even the non-governmental organizations do you know the kind of work that CAC does? Yeah. So what kind of work do we do? And what are some of the people we work with, or CAC works with? I know that CAC works with the United Nations. Mm -hmm. It uh, it's also works with the African Union as an observer status. 
at but recently it's uh, trying to end uh, child prostitution and human trafficking as mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. because what actually happens mm-hmm. yeah so, and cat uh, actually deals with mostly with the children and the youth as well it seeks to empower them not just uh, advocate for their rights but also empower them to actually mm. be able to actually advocate for their own rights mm. advocate for the rights of their own peers mm. other children as well mm. so the reason why this work is very important to me is because the issues that they're attacking mm. especially the advocacy of child rights actually are very close to home mm. very close to her because mm. I actually grew up in the community where actually all this was happening mm. we had a uh, the and the unsafe environment for children mm. where children didn't have access to primary education and even when they did have the the, the environment at the mm. schools mm. did not allow them to actually stay in the school and be able to actually mm. get that education mm. that they actually tested for so mm. they're actually coming in to come and step up fight for the rights of these children empower us to even speak out and tell the government that Mm. you are not uh, that you are failing in some areas mm. that for me was a big challenge a big motivation mm. for me. so yeah, do you think this is important very very because there's still a lot to be done mm. especially for the children in Mombasa county mm. and uh, the children in Kenya as a whole okay yeah. okay um children youth are supposed to have freedom the freedom to play yeah. you know to choose their own friends and to express themselves yeah. Does this does that always happen? And if it doesn't, why not? Well, we come from a uh, and a community that actually puts the children as the lowermost people mm. among us. Everywhere mm-hmm. you go, mm-hmm. especially in Mubasa County, mm-hmm. it's a child that is not allowed to sit down and actually express their views. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's normally the adults who do that. Mm-hmm. And basically because of the old notion that children actually do not know what they want, mm-hmm. when in real sense they actually know mm-hmm. what they want. Mm-hmm. So for me, we, we have been told that we have that right to express ourselves, but they actually, we are not given that plan mm-hmm. to actually express ourselves. Mm-hmm. So for me, we are not able to, simply because the community doesn't want to view us as people who can actually... Uh, address our own issues, express our express mm. our issues, express mm. our problems. So it's been a real big hurdle for us to come back. But I'm glad that institutions are actually jumping in. CAC is jumping in mm. to empower us, to actually tell the community that these young guys can actually uh, teach something. To mm. you. They can actually tell you what is actually affecting them instead of you actually just mm. assuming mm. Yeah, mm. of the problems that are facing. Um, now. Uh, what what do you think is uh, can be done yeah. to ensure that um, you have that freedom of expression or you you have that freedom to play, yeah. um, you know, to freedom to play and and, and to have to express yourself, to have your voice heard, to uh, choose your own friends, to express yeah. yourself. Basically, what do you think? Awareness, one awareness. Mm-hmm. Actually, getting down even to the interior parts mm. to actually speak them because. There are children who are never heard of their rights. Mm. I know it's very hard to imagine, but they are actually there. Mm. They don't know that they have the right to a conducive environment, that they have a right to participate, mm. even in the making of policies by the county government and even the national mm. level. The children who do not know that they have actually a right to education that protects them even from early child, early, early marriages. Mm. You know, mm. they, they are still small, very more uh, cases of. FGM, mm. which is currently happening. Mm. Children, that they, they don't know that they have a right to protection. Mm. So for all this to happen, I think awareness is a very key thing. Mm-hmm. Number two, we need more support systems, a bigger mm-hmm. framework. Because sometimes, even the children who've been empowered, as they grow, they get to 18, mm. and then there are not so much, so mm. many programs for them to actually mm. uh, continue. Mm. So they actually left out. So after 18, what mm. is next? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um... Tell me, why, why, why is it that, um, I know you alluded to it, but uh, maybe I want to interrogate a little further. Mm-hmm. Why is it that children do not get that opportunity to play? To play. What are the main reasons of children not playing? We have so many cases. It's a very sad thing, but we have so many cases. Mm. We run grabbing. Mm-hmm. They, they are located playing grounds. Mm. Because I remember the playing grounds that I played on as a child. Mm. Right now they're not there. True. 
because mm-hmm. now we have constructions being made yes. and nobody's actually jumping in mm-hmm. to actually say that hey stop stop constructing this, this and these places mm-hmm. even as much as development is a key thing for the mm-hmm. community mm-hmm. but we should actually have spaces playing grounds for actually kids to come and play on yeah, true. the fields are mm-hmm. also in a very terrible state mm-hmm. yeah because mm-hmm. we still need to nurture the talents of children mm-hmm. because not only just about the education in the classroom but it's also education also outside the classroom the mm-hmm. culture. Very true. Yeah. Now, um, earlier, I, when I um, I asked you concerning uh, partners uh, for CAC, yeah. you, 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 you talked about the partnership that CAC has international. Does CAC work at the national level, community level? Are there any partners you know that we work with at the community level or the national level? Any organization, any partners we work with, who do we work with? Uh, CAC is actually a merger of 250 agencies. Mm. So, and basically, the kind of work they do, mm. they don't have to necessarily be there in the nation. Mm. So, with the 250 arms that mm. they've actually made, mm. they're actually able to reach even the interior parts mm. that they that would have been really hard mm. for them to actually mm. get to if they decide to go to do to do. Mm. But through the amalgamation of 250 agencies, I can say that CAC mm. has been able to impact Kenya as our own. Okay. And I'm also very glad to say that it has also been uh, na- international wise. Mm. We have the United Nations, the United Church of Canada, mm. we have the ECOSOC, we have the African Union. So all these international partners are actually making CAC mm. to have, been, ha- have an impact, even mm. internationally. Mm. Because, yeah. 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 Um. Uh, can you talk about the networks? The networks. In Kenya. Yeah, that that CAC works with. Uh, we have, uh, mm. I think, child rights clubs, okay. most especially mm-hmm. in the in the in the primary schools. Mm-hmm. That is the first plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, CAC also works in conjunction with other NGOs. We mm-hmm. have the plan, mm-hmm. the SOS. Mm. So all of them mm. are actually able to coming together and mm. okay for the rights of children, mm. especially the child rights clubs that we normally have. Mm. We also have the county assembly, mm-hmm. which. Uh, CAC actually has a liaison with mm-hmm. because in each and every county we have a children's uh, children's assembly and even at the national level we mm-hmm. have a Kenya children's assembly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So in the child rights, okay, basically to come back to the counties mm-hmm. at a very lower level, we have the county child rights assemblies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially so basically what they do is they incorporate both the children in the county, the children mm. county families, mm. especially in the CRCs, that mm. is the children's rights clubs, mm. in different uh, primary mm. schools mm. and even the secondary schools from mm. different counties mm. and then it brings them mm. all together to mm. help the county children's mm. assembly. Mm. Yeah, and then in conjunction all of them, they come up and make the national children's mm. So, um... Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. Now, can you? What message can you be able to give to the Canadian children? What message? What can you tell um, the children uh, in Canada? Uh, basically, uh, what is your message to them? To say, have no fear, keep going. Because I think those, those, just keep going. Those two words. Mm. That means a lot. Mm. It doesn't matter whatever it is. In my face, mm. I can assure them that if they just keep going, mm. they will get to where they actually want to. Because mm. looking back to where I've come from, mm. to where I am right now, mm. I'm really proud to say that those two words have been a really big motivation. Mm. And it's not just about the people who are around you. It mm. may seem that sometimes there's not that much of a support system, mm. but if you are able to actually uh, empower yourself from inside, and actually feel that you're a somebody, not just mm. going up to be a somebody, but mm. you are actually a somebody, mm. you'll actually get to where you want. Mm. It's the creation of a conducive environment, you get to it. But it all takes time. I just mm. keep, going. Mm. keep going. Maybe this is out of the questions, uh, you know, besides the questions that um, uh, I have set aside to ask you. Mm. Recently, as a youth, you traveled to Canada to go and have an exchange program. Yeah. Maybe you can take a little bit about how the experience you had with the youth uh, in Canada and um, what and, and the experience you've had with the youth here and how do you, how, what can you say about that? How do you match that? How do you use uh, what you, you learned and how do you think, what mm-hmm. can you give, what word can you give uh, the youth back with the experience that you've had 
recently. First and foremost, the experience in Canada was awesome. The kids there were awesome. We had so much interactive sessions with the children and the youth because we had the, the, we had the, youth, the World Cup. Mm-hmm. We also had the Go Project where we go to interact with different children from different age groups. We also go to interact with youths. And we actually saw the youth programs. Mm. And they were so much alike with what we have here because mm. they also had workshops to mm-hmm. empower uh, mm. the children and the youth. Mm. And they also actually had youth facilitators mm. in the children. Mm. So that was very amazing to see because mm. they were actually trying to make, uh, give the children a global, uh, a global vision, a global uh, purpose whereby it was not just about the problems that they are facing, the issues that they are facing, but the children actually wanted to know mm. what it was like also outside. And I also think that is what is also happening in Kenya because youths and children actually, they don't want just to be national level because we also want a global vision. Yeah, to mm. actually be able to solve issues and actually sit down. So what the message I can give mm. to the mm. Kenyan youth from uh, my experience mm. back in Canada mm. is that we all need to be one collective mm. body, just one huge body. Mm. If we can all come to be- together, put all our experiences together, actually, mm. we can actually be able to empower more of us. Mm. And actually, and if I'm able just to touch two or three lives, those mm. lives I will touch another two or three. Mm. With time, I will. I might not be able to get to everyone at once, but mm. with time, the network that I've built uh, will be able to actually get to the areas that I want to and the issues. That we are all be facing, we have to be able to be better. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, did you go alone? No. We, is well, there I, I, maybe you know why I'm asking this is because this is going to be shared with other youth. Mm-hmm. So, um, is, is there other 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 youth you are able to learn with? You know, or you're connected with here? Mm-hmm. To, to be able to advance or to push for these issues of safety, freedom, and 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 uh, and uh, peace uh, in in this country. Yeah. Yeah. Or are you working alone? No, I'm not working alone. Mm. It's very hard. They say that if you want to go fast, mm. work alone. But mm. if you want to go far, mm. work with someone else. And okay. I'm glad that I have uh, youths around me and children around me mm. that actually share the same vision that okay. we can. Mm. So in Mombasa, we have so many, mm-hmm. but to mention just a few, I'll say like mm. Hazel, we have mm. plenty. Mm. At a national scale, we have so many other okay. that we went to. Mm. Uh, we were only, unfortunately, we only went uh, six mm. of us, mm. but I think we could have got even thousands mm. and millions mm. to come with us, but it was mm. not possible to yeah. fit all of them in a plane. Yeah. So we had guys like Emmanuel, Julian, mm. guys that actually come, came from Kisumu, like Julian. Mm. Others came from uh, Nairobi, like Malin. Others mm. came from the eastern part, like... Mm. Uh, like Moses, mm. and they actually all had different experiences from my own. Mm. And when I sat down with them, I like, Ooh. so that is what you are advocating for. Mm. And I was actually able to share my experiences with them. Mm. And with time, I was able to learn so much from the guys from the different parts of Kenya mm. because I was also I didn't know that uh, that there were issues like that happening mm. in the different parts, mm. and they were also able to learn from us mm. together with I and Heisen, especially from mm. the coastal part. Mm. So it was a really nice experience for me to actually first of all learn from my own mm. uh, home country, my own mm. uh, city, uh, my fellow citizens, my mm. fellow colleagues, mm. and then actually be able to go and learn from uh, colleagues on the international scale in Canada. Okay, thank yeah. you very much, yeah. uh, Obed, for your time. And uh, you're grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so for me, the work of CAC is very important because it actually provides a platform where young people and children are able to actually give out a voice because when actually CAC uh, comes down to the uh, local community base, it actually comes down through the child rights uh, clubs in primary schools, it comes down to youth groups in the, in the communities that we have, and actually is able to empower all of us. So what normally happens is that, that uh, we are able actually to express our views, not only just at the local level whereby we all actually get to say the issues that are affecting us in our communities, we are actually able to get to represent it even on a national scale. Uh, one the best example I can give on the uh, on the national scale is that at one point in time, uh, one of us that was Matt Moses was able to actually lobby a bill uh, to the parliamentary committee to actually uh, ban the advertisement of alcohol before 9 p.m. Uh, and I think that was one of the biggest milestones that we made actually as Kenyan children from the local level to the national level and even to the international level whereby I was actually uh, privileged to actually represent the African children, the African youth to actually voice out in the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth party report 
of Kenya to the UNCRC in Geneva in 2015, whereby we were actually was able to uh, express our, our views and our challenges, especially on the issues of uh, radicalization and environmental pollution that was, uh, actually begin to affect so much of us, especially in the in Mombasa County and even in Kenya because of the setting up of industries. Yet they didn't actually factor in the communities that they were actually setting them around in. And, uh, and even continuing back to see the CAC, even in the national level and even the community level, it has actually been able to bring in different NGOs, different CSOs, and different county uh, child rights clubs and organizations to actually be able to lobby. So with that uh, much network and that much support needed, we are actually able to voice uh, uh, the issues of the, our fellow youths, our fellow children. And right even from the time I was uh, 13 years old, that is when I actually started in 2015, up to this point, I'm glad to say that CAC has given me a platform, not only just to voice out the issues that have been affecting me, not only the issues that have been affecting uh, the children in Mobasa County, but also the issues that have been affecting the Kenyan child as well. Thank you.